Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Well, sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last. Drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and our happy postman, Mel Blank. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Well, Gracie wants to take advantage of the real estate boom and sell the Burns house, but George says no. In fact, George has said no exactly 614 times, tying the record of a girl I once had a date with. <laughs> let's look in at the Burns home this morning. Oh, please, George, let's sell a house. No. Well, there goes the record. <laughs> but, George, we could sell this house for $15,000. And then we could buy a smaller place for 10000 That would leave us 1000 for a vacation. What happened to the other 4000 Well, I needed a few clothes. <laughs> so that's why you want to sell the house. Oh, well, mostly I'm thinking of the vacation. And you need to be out in the sun, George. You've got bags under your eyes. I have? Yeah, and they'll look so much better if they're tan. <laughs> Yeah, tan bags are all the rage this season <laughs> Red eyes are nice, too Forget the vacation well, We could go to Hawaii You've always said that you'd like to flip lighted cigarettes At those girls who wear the grass skirts <laughs> That was just a mad dream Just uh, mad Yes, I know Well, we could, we could go to New York We could go where? New York New York yes, nice well, you, you could catch all the shows And I'd spend my time quietly with some old friends which old friend? Oh, Hattie Carnegie and Mr. Bergdorf and Mr. Goodman. Hmm. Back to the clothes again, huh? Gracie, you, you might as well give up. I'm not selling the house. Oh. The vacation doesn't appeal to you, huh? No. Well, let's see. Would you sell this house if you knew it was haunted? Sure. But it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Fifty years ago, a man was murdered here. The house is only ten years old. What does that do to your story? Well, it gives it a new beginning. <laughs> Ten years, years ago, ago, a man, man was, was murdered, murdered here. here. I know. Yeah. Grace, so you'll never get me to sell this house with a silly yarn like that. Well, it's not a silly yarn. Last night, I saw his ghost in our bedroom. He just stood there like a zombie. Oh, sure. sure. Hi, Burnses. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. <clears throat> You're just in time to hear the latest. Now, Gracie wants to move into another house because last night, she saw a zombie in the bedroom. Oh, that's ridiculous, Gracie. Well, sure. No matter where you move, you'll see George in the bedroom. <laughs> well. <laughs> there he is, the Milton Burl of Thursday night. <laughs> I couldn't resist, George. You gave me such a perfect opening. I led with my chin, huh? You led with all three of them. <laughs> the schmo has got a topper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in the den to read the paper. And we're not going to sell this house. Oh, now, Judge, don't be stubborn. I have made my decision. <laughs> Just like a mule, isn't he, Bill? Exactly. Acts like one, too. You, well, that's what I mean. <laughs> well, not against you. <laughs> sell the house, huh? Gracie, George just made a decision Bill, 15 years ago the preacher said Do you, George Burns, take this woman, Gracie Allen? And George said, I do That's the last decision he ever made <laughs> Gee, and I always thought the husband was the boss <laughs> You are single, aren't you? <laughs> well, now, Bill, let's get busy Help me think of something that'll make George want to sell the house well, let's see. Uh, oh, you might tell him his foundation is giving way. Well, what's that got to do with it? He doesn't even wear one during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know how to make George move. I'll get Meredith Wilson over here, and he'll help me. Okay. <laughs> Now, Meredith, 
Have you got your instructions all clear? I think so, Gracie. Now, uh, we're going to make George think this house is built over a swamp. Yeah, that's right. Now, this part of the basement is directly under where George is sitting. When you hear my cue, start the swamp noises. Very well. I have my flute and the other effects ready. Good. Now, you wait here in the basement. I'll go up and tell George he's catching swamp fever. George? Yes? George, I'm going shopping. I just came in to give you a goodbye kiss. Okay. Why, George, you're burning up. That's me, honey. Old volcano lips. <laughs> I, I don't mean that. I mean you've got a fever. Uh, let me see your tongue. Stick it out. Ah. Oh! Well, what, what's the matter? It's all pink. Well, isn't it supposed to be? No. Uh, how does your liver feel? Fine. Stick it out. <laughs> Stick it out. I can't. Aha! Uh -huh. Paralysis of the liver. <laughs> huh? One of the first symptoms of swamp fever. Swamp fever? Oh, yes. I knew this would happen if we kept on living over a swamp. <clears throat> We're living over a swamp. Yes, we've got to get out of here, George. Swamp fever is horrible. Little microbes get into your red corpuscles and blow them up until suddenly they go boom. 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 There goes one. <laughs> Gracie, this house is not built over a swamp. But I tell you, it is, George. Sometimes when it's real quiet, you can hear the quicksand gurgling beneath it. Listen. <laughs> It's funny, I never heard that before. <laughs> How long have you known about this swamp? Mm, ever since I got my new alligator bag. <laughs> when did you buy that? That's just it, I didn't buy it, I caught it. <laughs> oh, stop. Oh, but it's true, George. Sometimes when it's real quiet, you can hear the alligators beneath it. Uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> goes on down that basement? Oh, let's sell the house and get away from here, George. It's a swamp. It is not. But I tell you, it is. Sometimes when it's real quiet, you can hear other swamp noises. Now, listen. <laughs> that does it. I'm going down that basement. Oh, no, George. An alligator will get you. There are no alligators in our basement. Who's down there? Nobody but us alligators. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith Wilson, come up out of that basement. George, I would advise you to sell this house immediately. Alligators can be very annoying. Meredith. Each year, more than 300 African pygmies are devoured by alligators. Sell immediately, George, or your house will be shunned by all African pygmies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll risk it. Now, get out. And think of the quicksand in your basement. If you ever get caught, it'll take quite a jerk to get you out. I'll send for you. <laughs> now, scaram. This burns me up. Oh, you see? Swamp fever. Stop with that swamp fever. How long are you going to pester me? Until you say I can go out and look at houses. Okay, I give up. You can go out and look at houses. I, I have your permission? You have my permission. Oh, good. You know, I felt so guilty when I was out looking at them yesterday. <laughs> I should have known. Take me out to the ball game. Well, the big league clubs opened up for business this week with the turnstiles clicking from Sportsman's Park to Coogan's Bluff. While the daily scores move back onto page one in your favorite paper, and the roar of the crowd in the bleachers echoes from the sand lots to the stadiums. Yep, it's the people's game, Bill. That's baseball. And like the people, it's here to stay. Why not, Meredith? A game so rich in traditions, heroes, and thrills. It's a unique and deep-rooted expression of the American scene. Brings to mind how truly Maxwell House coffee belongs to our American scene, too. 
For just as baseball is our national game, so coffee is our national drink. And it's a significant fact that today more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. It's Maxwell House wherever you go. Flavor tells this popularity story, of course, that good to the last drop Maxwell House flavor that results from the skillful blending of these premium Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. Adding up to great coffee at its flavor peak. So, friends, why not enjoy the best in coffee goodness, coffee pleasure? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Just say, Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. George, I found a darling little hilltop house for only $10,000. A jolling place. Yeah, just a jolling place. Write out a check and we'll move in tomorrow. I'd like to see it first. Oh, you don't want to bother to look at it. It's a nice place. Sits right on top of a hill. How high? Well, can you yodel? <laughs> Pretty high, huh? I'd better look at it. Oh, well, all right. You get your hat and coat while I see who's at the door. Good afternoon, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> Here's your mail. Thank you, Mr. Postman. Well, you um, may not be delivering mail to us much longer. I think we're going to move. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I'd miss our little visits. You're the only person I've ever met so similar to myself. So gay, so jolly, so full of, if you'll pardon the expression, zip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's very flattering, Mr. Postman But if we move into a smaller house We can make a tremendous profit on this one Forget the profit After all, what is money? Just something that brushes against our fingers On its way to Washington <laughs> oh, Well, we'd keep enough for a vacation And some new clothes Oh, a uh, brush <laughs> <laughs> I was down the basement looking for the alligator. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm ready to go look at that hilltop house. Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. Mr. Burns, don't move away. Don't worry, Mr. Postman. <laughs> Something tells me we'll wind up right back here. Oh, that makes me so happy. I can just feel a great big burst of joyous laughter welling up inside of me. Well, let it out. Here it comes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Burns Remember, keep you smiling Boy, when you said this was a hilltop home You weren't kidding We drove to the end of the road and we've been walking up this trail now for 45 minutes. Well, just a few more steps and we're through walking. Good. And then we climb the rope ladder. <laughs> oh, fine. Who'd want to live in this isolated spot? It's not so isolated, dear. Why, people traveling from Los Angeles to San Francisco pass within a few feet of this place. Really? Yeah, so close you can almost shake hands with the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> They're in an airplane. Mm-hmm. Well... Here we are at the top. Uh, where's the house? All I see is a tumble-down log cabin. George, that's no way to talk about your future home. That log cabin is the house? Now, don't take that attitude, dear. Abraham Lincoln was born in a log cabin. From the looks of it, this is the one. <laughs> George, around Hollywood, it's very fashionable to live in a hilltop home. Who lived here before? The pigeons. Though... Walter Pigeon? No, just plain Pigeon. The plain... 
Oh, <laughs> that's very well. Nice people. Yeah. Fine people, yes. Well, open the door and let's go inside. There's no doorknob. Oh. Well, get down on your knees and stick your finger under the door and pull it open. Okay. There. You're down on your knees. Now open the door. <laughs> it's open. Let's go in. Ah. Now, isn't this charming? Kitchen, bedroom, living room, dining room, and den. And no silly old walls in between them. <laughs> Where's the bathroom? And, and it's ours for only $10,000. Why, we can go to Europe on our vacation. Where's the bathroom? Well, and, and look at this view. On a clear day, you can see Catalina. Where's the bathroom? And on a clear day, you can see that, too. <laughs> Let's get out of this mountain gold den. I'm not ready to be a hermit. Oh. Well, then I've got another place to show you. A beach cottage. Well, now you're talking. A little seaside home would be nice. Let's look at that. All right, come on. You and I... Oh. oh. Well... <laughs> here it is, George. Only $10,000 for this charming little beach cottage complete with swimming pool. I don't see any swimming pool. Where is it? In the basement at high tide. <laughs> the ocean comes right into the basement? Well, not the whole ocean, just part of it. <laughs> Let's forget this joint, too. Look at the shape it's in. Shingles missing. Planks gone. Well, it's built of driftwood, and some of it's drifted. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. But think of the advantages. This house not only has running water in every room, but it has grunion running in the water. <laughs> Look, Gracie. Look, as they come in the door, we catch them in a net and have them for dinner. Then the shark comes in the door and has us for dinner. <laughs> Gracie, we're not buying this aquarium. Maybe you'd like to live in the middle of the ocean. But I'm a landlubber. A landlubber? Yes. Well, if the kiss you gave me this morning is a sample of loving you do on land, we better... Never mind, never mind. It's Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. the real estate man's office. Go in and tell him we don't want his hilltop house or his beach cottage. Oh, now, George, let's not be hasty. They were bargains. Bargains? One house was so high it was above the clouds, and the other one was so low it was underwater. Do I look like an eagle or a barracuda? Mm, turn profile. <laughs> Never mind. Tell the man we're not interested. But, George, they were only $10,000, and if we sell our house for $15,000... We'll have lots of money for vacation and new clothes. Think it over and then decide. Gracie, 
I wouldn't buy those houses if they were 10 cents. I wouldn't buy them if they were the last houses on earth. You couldn't give them to me. They stink. Uh, can't decide. Can't make a decision. <laughs> now, honey, surely you could see how awful those houses were. Well, I guess my love for you kind of blinds me, George. You see, I'd be happy in a cave if you were there. Well... I guess I would be, too. Oh, good. I know where we can get a cave for only $2,000. <laughs> Go in and tell the real estate man no sale. Oh, well, you come in with me. He said he had three houses for our consideration. Now, we've only seen two of them. Well, I guess it can't do any harm to hear about the other one. Come on. Oh, hello, Mr. Craig. Uh, this is my husband, Mr. Burns. Glad to know you, Mr. Craig. How do you do? I have three houses for your consideration. The first is a hilltop home. Oh, the view is breathtaking. The second is a beach cottage. Mr. Is... Mr. Craig, we saw the first two places. You don't have to tell us about those. Just the third one. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Burns, but this is the way I memorize the sales stock, and if I don't say it this way, I forget. <laughs> well, Mr. Craig, you go right ahead. How do you do? I have three houses for your consideration. <laughs> the first is a hilltop home. Oh, I see. You... Isn't this the same man who sold us some office furniture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the man. He's selling real estate now. Mm. How do you do? I have three houses for your consideration. The first is a hilltop home. Ah, oh, the view is breathtaking. The second is a beach cottage. It is on a beach. No. <laughs> Ah, smell the salt air. It is invigorating. The third is priced at only $4,000. It is convenient for... $4,000? Well, that'll leave us $11,000 for new clothes and a vacation. It is convenient to all of us and... And... It is convenient to... How do How you do? do? <laughs> for your consideration. The first is a hilltop home. Ah, the view... Hi, Burgess. <laughs> See, I saw your car parked out in front. What's doing? How do you do? I have to... <laughs> your consideration. Well, thank you, but I'm not interested. How do you... Bill, for I... heaven's sake, don't interrupt the man. He's a real estate salesman, and he's got a spiel all memorized. Yes, Phil, and we want to hear about that third place. It sounds like a wonderful bargain. Go ahead, Mr. Craig. How do you do? <laughs> I have three houses for your consideration. You're a real estate salesman, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> I happen to be in the selling game myself, Mr. Craig. I sell Maxwell House coffee. Bill, will you... Maxwell let... House is rich, delicious, and mellow. Uh, that famous Maxwell House flavor, you know, is the result of careful selection and blending of premium Latin American coffees, radiant roasted to perfection. It's no wonder more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. How do you do? Oh, no. <laughs> I have three houses for your consideration. The first is a Maxwell House. Ah. <laughs> no, that's wrong. No, it isn't wrong. Maxwell House is always first. First in flavor, first in coffee goodness. Bill, and... we'll be here all day if you don't let Mr. Craig finish. See, I'll tell you what I'll do, Mr. Burns. I'll go into my private office and do my sales talk up to the third house. Then I'll come in here and finish it. Smart move. Go ahead. <laughs> Bill, if you've got anything to say, say it now. Well, George, if that's your attitude, I won't say anything at all. I guess I know when I'm not wanted. <laughs> oh, Bill, don't be hurt. Go ahead. No. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I won't go do on, it. Go you on, You can torture me, George, but I won't say another word about Maxwell House coffee. Bill, go ahead. I won't tell you how oh. Maxwell House can't be beat for coffee drinking pleasure, yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. <laughs> well, Bill, I didn't mean it that way. I'm sorry. You can twist my arm, but I'll never tell you that in Maxwell House you get so much more for so little more. That's why so many millions of Americans agree today's coffee buy is Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Well, Bill, please forgive me. No, George, I won't forgive you. Well, the third I... is priced at only $4,000. <laughs> it is 
convenient to all bus and streetcar lines. It is new. It is modern. Ah, oh, it is a safe... Hey, I've thought it over, George. I'll forgive you. <laughs> so long. How do you... Oh, know? no. <laughs> George, that was a brilliant inspiration having Mr. Craig write out his sales talk. Yeah, it's easier to read him than to listen to him. Yeah, and I still think that third place was a bargain. It was brand new, it was completely furnished, it was ha half a block from Hollywood and Vine, and it was only $4,000. It was also a trailer. <laughs> Some bargain. I'll say. Well, here's our own house, and it still looks best to me. Let's get out. Well, George, we shouldn't have come here. We should be out looking for a house to live in. No, sir. They can keep their hilltop homes and beach cottages. We've always got this place. Well, not exactly. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I was so sure you'd like one of the other places. You mean... You... I sold our house this afternoon. Oh, no. How much did you get for it? 15000 Well, with 15000 to spend, I guess we can find another place... Did you get it all in cash? Well, not exactly. Well, how much? Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Five hundred dollars? Yeah, we get the rest in monthly payments. Uh, a hundred a month? Well, not exactly. Well, to save time, is it ten dollars a month? How did you guess? <laughs> Just had a feeling about it. Well, at least we've got five hundred dollars cash. Well, not exactly. Now what? Well, I had to pay the real estate man a fee. Uh, how much? Five hundred dollars. <laughs> In other words, as far as money is concerned, we broke even. Well, not exactly. Huh? I had to pay the escrow. Well, this is murder. Well, let's go in the house. Thank goodness we've got 60 days before the new owners move in. Well, uh, not exactly. When do they move in? Open our front door. Yeah, what do you want? Nothing. They've already moved in, huh? George, do you love me? Well, not exactly. <laughs> Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. Yours truly, Bill Goodwin. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. And now, here are George and Gracie. Oh, now, George, stop complaining and go to sleep. What if I did sell our house? This hilltop house is a wonderful place to spend the night. It is not. We're up so high, I can't sleep. Oh, we're not up so high. Here, have another whiff of oxygen. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And now, stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Breakfast hurried, husband worried, don't get flurried. Get instant Maxwell House. It's instant, it's new. It's good to the last drop, too. Yes, trust Maxwell House to make a better instant coffee. True coffee flavor, true coffee aroma, because it's all coffee made from America's favorite, the famous Maxwell House blend. And thrifty. A jar of instant Maxwell House makes fully as much as a pound of regular coffee. So get instant Maxwell House. Rich and mellow. Good to the last drop. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.